Welcome back everybody. I am so excited for Lightroom's new color feature. The color grading tool is going to replace the split toning and it is awesome. There's so much you can do with it. I'm already having so much fun with it and it couldn't come at a cooler time. Like I'm actually excited. I'm not just saying that because it's YouTube and you're supposed to be excited. I'm actually like really excited. I just started studying color theory a lot more in depth and this tool is going to allow me to do so much. I'm going to use this on every single photo. Like I, I, I just can't even get my head around how cool this new feature is. I'm going to show you my personal workflow, how I plan on incorporating it, what I like what I enjoy with colors based on my spectrum and yeah I hope you find some inspiration and some help in how to use it and use this to craft your own style your own unique you version that's enough out of me let's get into it So we are back in the brand new shiny light room and you were going to scroll down to where split toning used to be located. But if you're not seeing color grading, that means you need to update your Lightroom. You should now be seeing this panel that says color grading no longer seeing split toning, though you can essentially use it in the same way. Uh, you would do that by coming into like, for example, this one's the shadows, this is the midtones, this is the highlights, and you would just treat it as if you um, were using the split toning sliders before. The only difference is now you have the midtone option. Uh, you also have a different view, which is where most people will probably work from. It's the default view here that shows all three. And I'm gonna show you how I would use this to color grade uh, a few different photos that are all very different scenes. So this one is a sunset with a bit of snow. And uh, I'm gonna start with that one shot at Crater Lake a couple of years ago. So the first thing I'm looking at is I want to put a bit more pinkish red into the sky. You can see that there was already some of that, that those tones. I just want to make that more pronounced. So I'm gonna start this one with my highlights and I'm gonna come down to the pinkish red tinge here and kind of just drag around. And what I actually might do is I'm gonna come into the highlights. Yeah, I find it easier to work on the colors individually. I'm kind of learning this as I go with you. So I do like that color and the saturation I'm gonna play with a bit here and just kind of come up and down to see how much I think is too much. And I'm gonna go somewhere around here. I'm just eyeballing this. And I am most likely in most situations gonna boost the luminance of my highlights. And this situation is no different. In fact, I'm gonna go pretty aggressive with that. The reason for that is that I like to create a lot of contrast in my images with the highlights being very vibrant and full of color and full of, I'm gonna use the word pop, and my shadows are just sort of meant to offset that. So with that in mind, I'm coming to my shadows and I'm gonna go the opposite color. So actually, I'm gonna come back into here so I can see. If this is the uh, highlight color I chose, I want the complementary color, which will be the exact opposite in my shadows. So I think that's gonna be somewhere around kind of in here. Yeah, that sort of a greenish looks all right. So now that I've got the color selected, I'm gonna come into my shadows grading slider here. I'm not sure what to call it. And I'm gonna sort of play around with the saturation a bit. I definitely am gonna go very subtle with the, with the green and the shadows. I think 40 was good and I'm gonna, most likely deepen these in most situations. Now in this case, I could go both ways. I, I could make an argument for either. I kind of like it um, with that green coming through a bit more, maybe somewhere around 10 at the most I would go. But I think I'm gonna just come down a little bit. And like I said, I could make an argument for either in this particular instance. And then we have the blending and balance modes down here. So I don't think I'll mess with this too much, but I am gonna at least give it a slide just to see how it affects the image. So that, that makes the whole image a bit brighter and it adds something. I'm not sure how to, how to put my finger on it. A bit of glow to it. And this way, there's more um, of a subtle effect from the color grading. I think I definitely like blending it, maybe not all the way to 100, but I'm gonna blend it around 75, I think, somewhere around there. And I like that. Now, a cool little trick if you wanna see what changes you've made so far is you can always just flip this little toggle up here to turn the entire panel off. And I really like how far it's come already. I like the pinkish hues that are kind of all over the sky, but we still have the green in our trees um, and in our shadows. I'm gonna play with the balance a little bit. This will shift towards the um, colors and luminance of our shadows if we go left or towards the colors and luminance of our highlights if we go right. So most likely I'm going to come towards the highlights in most situations, but it won't be much. It might not even be at all. Yeah, this is, it's just a, sort of a fine tuning measure and um, I don't think I'm going to mess with that too much. So the midtones is a big change they've made. Uh, you can, by the way, always come to global, but I like having the split tone between sh um, the shadows and the highlights. 
I'm going to play with the luminance personally with my style most often, and I'm almost always going to lower those. What that's going to do is further separate the contrast of the bright pink highlights and the deeper shadows. So I like that a lot. Literally just that change I think looks cool. I can see what it looks like by using this eyeball here. And if I hold it, I can see what it was like before and after. And maybe not quite so aggressively I'm seeing with that before and after, so I'm going to go about halfway. And I think that's cool. Again, this is just to my taste. Um, it always will be. Uh, this has nothing to do with the color toning, but I want to just deepen this section up here and make that a bit darker. So I'm just going to do that with the graduated filter and kind of pull focus back down uh, just towards like the trees and, and this section of sky where the most drama is happening. And actually, you know what? There's one more thing I'm going to show you. Uh, I would definitely, to get the snow, I would bring the blue luminance up most likely in this image. Yeah, I'm going to bring the blue luminance up. And uh, for some reason, the saturation was already turned down on the blues. So I don't mind it turned down a little bit. But yeah, I think that's a, a lot better. Just that makes the snow stand out a little bit more. And so, yeah, that would be my stopping point on this particular image. Again, if we turn off the color grading, you can see what it was like before and after. And I think that is a lot more magical, a lot more vibrant. Let's get into the next photo. This one was taken in Yosemite Valley National Park. And on this one, I'm, I'm noticing a bit of a strange color casting anyway. So I think this one's a very good one to show you how I would color grade it because I find the colors in this one very odd. I don't know if it was the air that day or a filter or what, but there's a weird casting to the greens that don't look right to me. And there's, there's sort of just a green tinge overall. So I'm going to start with my highlights and the highlights I can, I can just tell are going to affect a lot of this rock and maybe a bit of the blue, but really it's going to be more in the brightest sections of the rock here. To me, there's already a weirdish yellow cast. I want to get that a bit more towards a soft blue, which is going to be counter to what we did last time, which is when we warmed up the highlights and we cooled the shadows, which is kind of typical. But in this case, I know I want to get these rocks to be a bit more pure, a bit more cool. So I'm going to choose a hue that's around, let's see, probably in the, the cool blues 230, I think, is about what I want. So here's a cool little trick. Um, if you turn your saturation all the way up and then drag your hue slider and sort of watch your image as it goes around the color wheel, I'm going to just look for the moment where I think it's about the blue that, I am, that I'm looking for. And yeah, about there, 225. Um, obviously, that's way too strong an effect, but that's the color of blue. And that's sort of the, you can see if I go from yellow all the way here, that's the range that I want. That's the right hue. So now I'm just going to increase the saturation until I think they look good. And that's going to be about 40 in this case. And to me, that already looks a lot better. I can uh, use this eyeball again and see on and off. And that yellow compared to what's now the blue. In also in the sky, it just looks like a much more natural shade of blue. So I'm already really happy with that. The next thing I'm going to do is come into my midtones, I think. And again, I'm first, I want to know what I'm affecting. So what I'm going to do is just crank the saturation and see what's most affected. And as I sort of scan through here, um, it's definitely affecting a lot of the same areas as the last one did. So I'm going to have to be careful with that. I'm going to bring the luminance down similar to what we did before. And I, I do like what that's doing. It's creating that contrast between our rocks and the sky, which is what I'm after. Um, on that topic, I didn't play with the luminance on highlights. So I'm going to quickly jump back into there and just see what I want to do with that. I would usually push it, but I'm, in this case, I'm not going to push them. Um, maybe a smidge, but I don't want to blow out the highlights. And it looks like I might blow out the rocks if I'm not careful with that. So, uh, all right, back to midtones. I think it's going to affect too much of the image in a way that I don't want. So I'm going to leave that well enough alone. And I'm going to come down into the shadows. First of all, I want to see what the shadows are going to, you know, what's going to be affected. So let's just drag this all the way up. And it looks like it's going to be mostly our trees, partially our sky, and then the actual shadows and the rocks and stuff. Uh, I do want to change the shade of this of these trees, but I don't think the shadows is the right way to do it with the color panel because it's also going to affect my sky in these um, shadows here. I really only want to affect the shade of green, but I am going to play with the luminance of the shadows and just kind of go back and forth. Like I said in the last photo, I tend to go down with the luminance to create that contrast, um, but it's already got a pretty pleasing contrast. If anything, yeah, I might come slightly up in this particular case. Uh, so that this one is not as much color grading just in here, but I do like the changes I've made. If I turn that on and off, 
it's really gotten rid of that color casting. So for me, if I don't like the shade of these greens, which a lot of you might already think is fine, but I'm going to go back to the old handy uh, HSL slider, and I'm going to just affect the actual greens and probably the yellows, because it's hard to tell which ones these are. So let's first go, we're going to use this little uh, arrow here, which if you haven't seen this before, allows you to just hover over a color, and you can just click and drag up and down. If you look at the hue slider as I'm dragging up and down, you can see it's it's affecting greens and yellows because it's detected that as the color range. So that works for me. I'm going to just drag these until I think the greens are about the shade I would like. And I tend to like a, I don't know how to describe it, a greener green than like Sophie does. But to me, I prefer that color. And again, we can turn this panel on and off and just see the changes we've made. We've moved those towards a forestier green, I think, in my opinion. Um, and then I'm going to play with the luminance on the greens as well. And I think I'm going to just give them a little pop of luminance. So again, if we turn the slider on and off, that's before and that's after our changes. Um, might not be to your taste. I know Sophie would hate what I've done. I'm going to dial back the, the green hue just a little bit and move it slightly towards yellow. But I think that's about right for me. And that would be that. That would be how I affect this particular image with the color grading. And I think it made a tremendous difference. I'm really happy with it. And I'm going to show you one more photo. The last image I have for you guys was taken at a place called Heart Lake in California. It's a beautiful shot of Mount Shasta. I had actually just shot an EOI's comment here, uh, but that's neither here nor there. We had a nice sunrise coming up, and I want to affect the colors of this by quite a bit. I much prefer in my photos for the sunrises and sunsets to have a bit of a pinkish red hue. So I'm going to start this time by actually going into the midtones, and the reason I'm thinking that is the highlights are going to be this deep yellow and I'm really looking to affect sort of where the, hi the, the highlights meet the shadows a bit. Um, so I just have a feeling from a bit of experience and a lot of this will be trial and error, but I'm going to, I'm going to try moving the shadows or I'm sorry, moving the midtones first. All right. So I'm going to leave the hue at zero, which I already know to be sort of a reddish pink, but I'll show you what that color that is. That's right here. I just really like this this particular hue. So I use that a lot. And I'm going to push it to a, wherever I think looks right, which I think is going to be about yeah 22 there looks good. And you can already see what I'm talking about. Those deep yellow tones have already become more of a orangish, reddish pink, um, just the, the natural colors of, of sunrise and sunset, which I really like. I'll turn that eyeball on and off so you can see the before and after. So just that alone, has changed the image a lot for me. Uh, in this case, I am going to add a bit more coolness to the shadows. I think it affected the sky the way I wanted, but maybe too much of the landscape has been impacted. So again, I've kind of memorized the hues that I like for my style. I'm going to go to 180. It's the exact opposite of the color I used. So I guess that's why I liked it so much. Um, I'll show you what color it is by just pushing saturation. That's the actual color. It's a, it's a nice teal. Uh, I'm going to come down though. I think probably somewhere around 22 as well, maybe. And I'm just sort of watching my shadows to see where I think it looks good. 20 looks about right to me. Uh, I am going to move the luminance down from my shadows to create some of that contrast and not too much, but yeah, about negative 10. There looks good. And I probably should have played with the luminance of my midtones as well. So I'm just going to drag up and down. And as usual, I am going to lower those, I think. Yeah, somewhere about there as well. About the same spot, really. So for my, sh for my highlights, I don't think I want to affect the color much more because you can see it's just sort of banding um, up here especially. Maybe if it helps blend it, I yeah, I'll push a little tiny bit here um, just to help blend. And then I'm also going to boost the luminance, I think, to just brighten the brightest parts. That's going to be my main impact is a pretty good knock to the luminance. The last thing I want to do once I've got all my colors and my luminosity set and my hue set is uh, the blending and the balance. So in this case, uh, I am going to blend, I think, let's see, I like to come all the way down and all the way up to see what it does. Uh, a slight adjustment, I think, somewhere, somewhere around 35. That's looking good to me. And uh, I am going to change the balance as well. I think I would usually push it towards the highlights, but in this case... About negative 20 feels better to me. So again, if we want to see what this looks like on and off, I can just click that. And it's subtly impacted the photo, but to me it's made the right differences. It's it's changed the tone to be these really warm, vibrant, uh, eye-grabbing 
hues of red, especially in the sky where the sunrise would be affecting it. The complementary colors, I think, look uh, they work really well in this case. So that would be where I would leave it for this third example. Uh, so as always, I am just going to mention that this is my personal style. The whole orange and teal um, contrast is pretty typical in cinema, and it does work really well for sunrise and sunset. So I don't stray too far from the normal on that one. So you see why I'm so excited for this, right? I mean, what you're going to be able to do, the unique ways you can color grade your images, you can save these as presets and have all these different ones for your weddings, for your wildlife, for your whatever, for your landscapes. Um, and you can just, you can hone a color style that is so uniquely yours. I think this is just game changing. So I'm stoked on it. I'm going to link you to some of my other workflow videos coming up here somewhere and a little subscribe button if you don't mind that'd be cool but um yeah that shows you some of my other workflows if you're interested in seeing more of my work and more of my styles i am an open book leave questions leave comments leave everything i'll catch you on the next one guys